Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to another OpenShift screencast. So, um, we've already discussed, uh, looked at how to add nodes to districts and how to use districts to kind of uh, create different, um, kind of uh, segment different profiles, uh, small, medium, etc. Now, what what I'm going to do is to show you how to use the HT Basic authentication that comes by default on with the OpenShift installation to create a user. Uh, by default, what the installation does is it creates a demo user. Um, we're going to go ahead and remove that, and the user is stored in the HT Pass file. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of remove the user and use the HT Pass WD command uh, to, uh, you know, to add a new user. So HT Pass, and we're going to call this user uh, OpenShift, right? Um, so of course using the HT pass command is going to allow us to create the user so I'm going to type a super secure password if you will uh, now if you check the HT pass you can see that I created the user open shape with uh, an encrypted password all right so that's step one um, step two uh, is to see how um, if we can log into the console uh, now I went ahead and added an entry in the um, DNS server uh, in our own case that points to our installation of OpenShift so it's going to be openshift.mal.local all right so uh, you can see here I'm being redirected to the console which means we're hitting the OpenShift installation and um, you can see that uh, by default it uses a self-signed certificate so of course if you are doing this in a production environment we will replace this with a, you know, a certificate you buy from a valid CA. Right, so we're going to log in. So open shift, open shift, and uh, we're going to wait for it to log in. And if everything went um, successfully, uh, you will see that uh, we, are, we are logged in as the open shift user. Um, one thing I noticed too, I am not sure if it's a bug. Uh, you can see we've logged in and we need to create a namespace you can see uh, some of the fonts are not rendering correctly uh, it's, it's confusing as to why uh, the setup did not set it up correctly uh, for instance if you click on create applications you will see that uh, you know a lot of the icons are missing uh, and, and a whole lot of stuff like that all right so uh, to fix this uh, what i found out was that uh, in the broker uh, we're going to go into the part of the open shift uh, directory in the console and in the public directory here uh, you will see that we already have an asset uh, directory but if I go into this and I tell the log of our uh, open shift console um, and I go into HTTPD uh, access uh, you will see that I'm trying to access um, I mean, it's not too clear here, so let me go to the errors, which will give us uh, more information. So let's see. Okay, so we can see that we caught an error here. Um, all right, so let's see if we can fix that. So, uh, follow open shift console uh, production and hopefully that will fix the problem uh, but one thing I also um, can okay so uh, we're trying to access the assets um, the assets directory but for some reason uh, we're not hitting that so uh, all right let's see um, there is no output here all right so let's just bear with me okay so httpd error all right attempting to find the exact error here 
which is weird. Okay, so just a moment. Let me use it, use action. Okay, so let's see. Anyway, um, just going to do it the hearty way. <laughs> um, just want to show you how uh, how I will fix this. So, uh, I'm putting all this so that you can see what I will do if stuff like this um, kind of happened. Uh, anyway, so here you can see the problem is that uh, it's trying to access the assets file, but here we're getting a 404. And uh, for some reason, this is uh, this is not good uh, because we need to make sure that it can access the URL uh, correctly. So what I will do is I will go back to the uh, console here. Uh, the HTML uh, directory and anyway, um, let me just quickly uh, solve this. Okay, so I'm going to copy. Um, I'm going to copy this and for some, uh, I'm going to create a. A symbolic link here um, so in this case um, we're going to link this to an asset directory here okay so you can see here we have an asset directory so I'm just going to go ahead and ensure that the Apache user uh, owns this and uh, if I refresh Right, so if I refresh, you will see that um, the icons render correctly. And if you click on uh, applications here, you can see all the icons are rendered completely. Um, so I'm not sure why um, it's doing that. I noticed uh, when I installed it previously, it uh, did show the same error. You can see all the icons are rendering correctly. Okay, so um, yeah, so we can see that we can log in successfully here. Um, we can try to set up. Our domain so uh, for some reason uh, let's just say I want to call I want to create a domain here and just say OO uh, it's gonna be our domain name and if I click on save you can see that OO domain has been created successfully and of course our public key so we can go ahead and upload our public key so in this case my public key will be inside my since I'm using Windows uh, my SSH key here and I'm going to go ahead and copy this key and paste it here and I'll save it all right so you can see it created the default key here and my domain and we need to add authorizations here so of course you can go ahead and do that you can see the sessions you want to authorize the sessions and you want to allow for you know uh, the scopes in this case uh, but you know um, anyway it's going to go ahead and create that anytime we try to use the REC command tool. Alright, so uh, if you click on create applications here, uh, you will see that uh, some things are missing. For instance, um, we know that we installed the PHP cartridge, but for some reason the cartridge is not uh, is not showing up here. Uh, you can see, you can say kick PHP here, and you can see here no cartridges are defined. Um, this is uh, one of the quirks. At first it will put you off, but you know, um, we're going to go ahead and fix that next, right? So, uh, one of the things you will notice also is if you check using the OO config command and you check the uh, sort of like if you check the cartridges, for instance, so in the or on the uh, on the broker, you can see that we have a cartridge, um, we have a command for the cartridges here. 
and you can go ahead and import that from uh, any of our nodes now this should work fine initially but um, in this case we don't have any brokers so uh, if we go into uh, our node you can use the OO admin cartridge command and this should kind of allow us to, to install the cartridges or list the cartridges we have installed so you can see we do have cartridges um, yes we do have cartridges but in this case the cartridges are not registered on the, on the console so to activate that what I'm going to do here is to go into the, the broker and using the O admin CTL cartridge and by the way this is a new um, if you've installed OpenShift before um, uh, previous command has been deprecated uh, now on the broker instead of having OO admin cartridge now you have you know um, the admin CTL cartridge command and kind of have some pretty neat um, options so in this case the command what we want to do in the command is we want to import um, want to import a node so and once we do this we're going to go ahead and kind of tell it to import the, the node um, you know specify the name of the node so in this case it's going to be open shift node so you can pick any of the nodes uh, if you will uh, of course there's a way of uh, kind of randomizing the nodes you're going to pick from but in this case we're going to specify the node uh, you know I'm going to tell you to pick from a node so uh, hopefully uh, this makes sense so I'm going to pick from the node 1 local. so it's going to go ahead and import the cartridges uh, into our broker into our broker so while that's while that's going on and uh, yeah you can see that uh, it updated about 23 cartridges you can see we have from Jenkins client um, to JBoss AS7, JBoss EWS 2 and 1 uh, we have all the cartridges here uh, one thing you want to also do uh, one thing you want to note here is that um, the cartridges have been imported but for some reason um, you know we still need to activate it if you will and um, to do that, we need to use the you know the, uh, the IDs. We're going to import the IDs, of course, uh, to activate, or you know we're just going to uh, you know use the dash Q option. But in this case, I'm going to use the dash dash IDs option to kind of activate, and I'm going to go ahead and copy all the IDs of our cartridges. So I will sanitize it a bit. All right. All right. So for some reason, uh, I'm going to. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm going to copy this and on the broker. Going to use the oh, oh, uh, admin ctl cartridge command again and i'm going to use the dash c to activate and this time around i'm going to use the ids option and in this case it wants us to have a comma separated list of ids um all right so let me let me just go ahead and uh let me go ahead and update this So once we paste that, uh, allow it to to activate the cartridges. Uh, all right. So we can see that the active is now active for Jenkins one. Um, it looks like we need to sanitize. Uh, we need to kind of sanitize this a bit more. So I'm sure there's a better way of doing that. Um, But in this case, uh, I'm going to kind of uh, you know, do this the, the, the hard way. So hopefully, um, feel free to fast forward this part of the video. Uh, 
just want to make sure that everything is captured Should this be time to kind of um, sing a, a song, uh, background song, if you will? A, right. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of uh, use the command again, uh, the CTL cartridge command, and in this case, we need to activate uh, for IDs and that's why I come a separated list of file. Uh, cartridges by the IDs. Okay. Alright, so we can see here that uh, it, it runs successfully and uh, you know uh, we need to just clear the broker uh, or oh, admin uh, broker uh, cache and we need to specify the C option to clear the, the broker. Right. So once we do that, uh, we can go ahead and refresh our web interface and uh, hopefully this time around we have our cartridges. So I'm just going to go ahead and load this and click on the create your first application. And voila, you can see all our cartridges are now showing. Uh, you can go ahead and create different applications. You can create a PHP 5.x application. And you can see here that uh, our gears are reflecting uh, because for this user, uh, we've told it to default uh, to issue them uh, both small and medium. Uh, but let's say you want to remove a kind of uh, a gear from a user, of course, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, of course, that would be using the OO admin CTL user command. And of course, um, pretty much everything uh, you can use to kind of update uh, an app. In this case, or for some reason, like in this case, we need to update a user, uh, a user profile, or kind of update um, how to manage um, users' gear sizes. So uh, that would be that would be nice. So for instance, I'll, uh, let's just go ahead and create a demo user, uh, just to show you uh, what I mean. Okay, so. So um, this time around, I'm going to set up the uh, the user using the RSC command tool. So RSC setup. So we need to specify the server. So in this case, we need to call this OpenShift.mal.local. And of course, um, Ibiza is going to help us upload uh, our certificate and all that. So I'm going to say yes. To bypass the check so log into OpenShift uh, local so I'm going to type demo and the password is uh, demo and I'm going to create a token and allow it to upload the file all right so here we are we're asked to create a namespace so in this case we're going to call this uh, NS all right and the namespace has been created successfully and you can see that uh, we have a maximum of eight gears and we have uh, small and medium so let's say this demo user, we don't want this demo user to be able to kind of, uh, you know, uh, create medium gears, right? Um, of course, you can use the OO admin CTL user. So OO admin as on the broker, so CTL user. Okay, and in this case, we're going to specify the user, the username. So it's going to be demo and here uh, we're going to tell that uh, we want to remove a gear size so we remove gear size and we specify the size we want to remove so we, want this, we don't want this user to create medium gears so we'll go ahead and remove that okay so um, after run successfully we should get a okay this output so you can see that our removing gear size medium for is a demo uh, so you can see that the gear size is allowed to create is only 10 and um, here of course you can set the maximum domains and if you're wondering how I know um, some of the stands uh, yeah uh, it's not rocking science here you can just type the command and it should give you all the options you need 
so for instance you want to set the maximum teams so in this case you can see that uh you know the maximum team allowed of course you can set that um of course you can set maximum gears if you like to for this particular user so in this case let's let's add the gear size again so add gear size right to medium uh, also let's um We can allow him to have sub accounts. Uh, of course, we can set the maximum teams here if we want. Uh, so let's say you can create the maximum of three teams, and of course the maximum domain uh, sort of ten. Let's say we want him to really have five domains here. All right. So you can see how flexible you can um, kind of um, play around with users and uh, of course the different um, rights they can have and how to set up the web console. Right, so you can see that um, that's updated the values here. You can see maximum domains is five, maximum team is three, and is allowed to create small and medium gears as well. All right, so um, hopefully this this video has um, kind of given you the the kind of options uh, and ways to see how to tweak some of the values. Um, and uh, if you have any comments or questions please feel free to drop them in the comment form uh, below we'll discuss this uh, if you feel uh, it's something that you don't understand or you're getting some form of errors uh, by the way you should always uh, you should just know that uh, this is my journey my encounter and how i installed openshift and my experiences and how to fix most of the bugs i encountered um, during the installation and uh, before i round up uh, let's go ahead and uh, tweak our user so uh, Let's say our OpenShift user has a maximum of five teams, and we're just going to go ahead and allow him have that. Okay. It was supposed to be for the OpenShift user. So um, hopefully um, you understood exactly what uh, what to do. And in subsequent screencasts, uh, we're going to talk about other topics, other areas of uh, tweaking our installation and um, kind of adding custom, um, you know, uh, custom quick starts to our application to enable us create, um, you know, the the right quick start for our application. All right. So, all right, just completed our domains and maximum themes. Uh, so please feel free to, um, you know, get to me as I said. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, see you in the next video.